Hi, thanks for checking out Next Level Carpentry. You know, it might be a surprise to some viewers that, that not everything carpenters are required to do fall under the category of living the dream of being a carpenter. Uh, shingling roofs, insulating, and caulking control joints in concrete all fall into that category. But it's work that still needs to be done. If you have a system that provides excellent results every time, well, it takes away some of the pain and misery out of doing an unpleasant job. So today I just want to do a quick video, and I always say quick and you know it happens, uh, but I want to do a quick video about the system I use or the steps I use for getting professional results in sealing up control joints and expansion joints in concrete every time. And this is like a lot of projects, having the right tools and the right technique are key to successful results. The best sealant I've found for sealing these control joints is a urethane caulk but make a note, it's not the self-leveling kind. Uh, that stuff has a time and a place and a purpose, but uh, for the most part, it's difficult to work with and I don't see consistent results with it. So I use a, a urethane caulk, but it's, um, it can be used vertical or horizontal. It's not self-leveling and I just tool it into place to get great results. So this is the, the typical uh, caulk gun that's used for this sort of stuff. I like this style. It has a smooth plunger on here, not a ratcheting little cheap uh, stamped metal handle. It's worth the extra money to buy a good caulk gun. And then I use uh, Tremco Dimonic Fast Cure, but uh, Sika makes one and NP1 makes a good urethane, but I've always used the Tremco Dimonic. So that's to say a good caulk gun and a good product are the first and most important uh, things to have for this sort of work. Because of the volume of this sort of caulking I do, I don't use this uh, standard caulk gun, but rather use this, uh, this bazooka style. It's made by the same um, um, manufacturer. It's got the same um, mechanism for advancing the plunger. Um, and this is called a sausage gun. And the reason is, that instead of rigid tubes with a fixed nozzle on every tube, this gun takes these sausages, and it's literally a sausage with a thin foil coating, little uh, crimped ends, and they slip down into this tube. I guess I'll show how that works now. This is what a sausage looks like when it's spent. I was doing some caulking yesterday. It's all cr smashed down to nothing. Uh, but I just release the, or retract the plunger and drop in a sausage tube, slides right down in that tube. And then I advance it so that little end uh, sticks out. And the best way to get rid of that little crimped end is a pair of regular side cutters. Hope this focuses, just clips that off. And I'll mention it now, and I'll mention it a few times in the video. Uh, this urethane caulk, it's like ooh black, man. Once it gets on something, it gets on everything. So uh, managing where the wet um, urethane caulk is, you've got to pay attention to it so you don't make a mess out of everything. But um, these sausage guns come with these plastic tips. They come like this, it's just a, a solid tip. And then it can be snipped off to whatever size joint uh, you're working on. I've got a whole range here and uh, believe it or not uh, there's times when I've used this monster tip to lay down a ridiculous bead of this sealant um, and that's not an ideal um, application but kind of a Hail Mary to stabilize the situation. Um, but for the most part a cut about this size that's oh, about a 5 8 half inch 5 8 inch hole works really well and that's what I'm going to be using today. So this little foil part twists out of here. This is where I manage that wet caulk. It's just sticky. When those strands get stuck on stuff, they just don't go away. I slip the tip down in this retainer ring. Just put that over the end of the foil. Tighten it down. And then the advancing plunger just pushes the urethane out of that foil tube 
and on out this tip. It's a great setup. There's not a lot else that's necessary for this. Um, knee pads aren't essential, but they sure help preserve the pants and the knees. I've got those old beat up, that old beat up pair. Um, then uh, masking tape. You'll see how that gets used. I use it in different widths, but I always get a good quality tape. This 3M stuff is good and holds up for this process. Um, 409 is essential for doing this job, and you'll see how that works. And last but not least is fine silica sand. That's the key to getting excellent results every time and having them stay excellent. This is a super fine grade. It's really nice. You can use stuff that's a little more coarse, but silica sand is nice. It's better than play sand because it has a uh, consistent texture and appearance. Play sand tends to have pebbles and rocks in it. Depending on the job, I'll put the silica sand in different dispensers. This is just a, like an old ketchup thing that I, allows me to sprinkle it. I keep an old paintbrush around for brushing the sand around if necessary. And then on bigger, longer joints where I have access, I'll use this bigger container uh, for the same purpose, but it just applies the sand more quickly. So that's the overview and background, uh, the arsenal of things needed to do a good job on this. So I'm going to head outside and show you how the process works. Well, let's go. I did a little pre-cleaning on these control joints with a thin diamond wheel and a side grinder to clean up rough spots and make a uniform gap between the driveway slab and the garage slab. After cleaning up the control joint with the diamond wheel, the next step is to blow out the joint to remove loose dust, pebbles, rocks, leaves, bugs, and whatever from the joint. I use a leaf blower here, but if compressed air is available, it's better. Well, not only is it, uh, this the most enjoyable work, but it's starting to get cool and breezy. Um, but I'm going to keep going just to show that uh, this can be done in somewhat less than ideal conditions. As long as it's not wet here, the masking tape will stick and I can proceed. It's a little on the cool side, but I've never had any issues other than a slower curing time by um, applying this. Um, yesterday I was doing a bunch and it was uh, 37 degrees. Everything's fine. Anyway, so the first step uh, after this is um, ground smooth to my satisfaction and all the dust is blown out and it's dry, I apply the masking tape. And I hope this shows in the video. These two um, surfaces are somewhat unlevel, and that's fine. That helps water drain off and not pool here. But I want to show how I treat an area like this. And then down at the other end of the door, these levels are more even, but I'm using the same method to deal with it. And I want the joint to start uh, somewhat slightly down. It'll be a concave joint in there. So I'll apply the masking tape just slightly below the crown of these tooled edges. As you'll see, the edges of the masking tape determine the edges of the finished joint. I'm using finger pressure to seal down the edge of that tape. That's important. This is hard to do with the camera rolling, but I'll do this upper side. And I like that. That'll make the joint wide enough to have uh, enough volume to stretch, but not so wide that it's smeared up here on the finished driveway surface. And this handheld panning shot, you can see a little more closely what's going on here. The finished joint will be slightly concave, about like the tip of my thumb here, and the edges will be feathered out down nice and smooth so they don't catch and peel out. And I'll speed up this video a little bit because it's boring, but I hope you get the idea that running this masking tape is surprisingly quick and efficient. At cross or T intersections, I use a special technique with the tape to get nice crisp corners. So I tear the tape so it's got a kind of an angle on there. Then I can start that angle right down in the joint. Like that. I've already done this other direction, but I tear the piece of tape with an angle going the other way and match up the corners of the tape. 
So when I peel this tape back, there'll be a nice sharp corner. I can do this side too here, and this will be a little better example. Just tear the tape so it has a one end uh, edge longer than the other. Stick it down and put that sharp end of tape right where I want the corner to be. And I use the opposite angle on the other side. Line up the two corners. So I'm basically mitering masking tape, if you can believe that. And with the masking tape down, uh, that's the end of the prep work. It's time to apply the urethane caulk out of this gun. I work um, right to left generally, just that's just the way I am. I'm right-handed and I do as much of a section as I can with weather allowing. This stuff is super sticky. If wind is blowing dirt and leaves around, it'll stick to that caulk immediately. So I'll do a short section. If it's a beautiful day, nice and calm, I can do a longer section. But the main thing is I try to apply the caulk so that the uh, joint is full and has that little concave surface to it that's really close to the finished joint I want. I don't want to starve it for caulk and I don't want too much uh, because then it's harder to tool it. And I guess the main thing I'm thinking about when I'm applying the caulk is to let the caulk work its way down into that joint. So I, um, I let the bead of caulk build ahead of the tip as it goes so that I know it's um, getting down into that crack. And there's all sorts of um, crack types with backer rod and all sorts of uh, things that need to be taken care of, but those are kind of another subject. I just want to show how to get a, a nice, perfectly tooled finished joint and not cover the extremes of what's possible with this system. And I'll just do a short section here going through all the steps so you can see how it works. Beginning with filling the joint with caulk. I've got a roll of paper towels handy here, which I did not mention in the supplies, but they're absolutely essential for this. I'm going to push out the little skinned over end of caulk from the work I was doing yesterday. And then I start on the joint. You can see the caulk come out of the tube and get ahead of the tip. And I just push that along. So you can see how it folds or rolls down into that joint as it goes. I'm using the a rounded surface of this tip that's cut on an angle to form that concave surface on the bead. It's just a little more than uh, is necessary, but as I tool it, it works a little more down into that joint. And this part of the process, you kind of get the hang of as you do a little bit so that you don't have extra fussing to do when tooling the joint. The closer this is to the finished bead, the less trouble it is later on. But that's looking pretty good right there. If you ask me, this is where the magic comes in, because although that's not a bad looking joint, it's not what I want to end up with. Instructions say, apply to a clean, dry, frost-free surface. Tool to desired finish. Dry tooling recommended. Do not thin. If there's anything controversial about this video and this method, it's going to be that dry tooling recommended. I use the 409, which is a mild soapy liquid, for wet tooling and you'll see how and why. I've had people comment that using that will put bubbles in the surface. I've done thousands of feet of this and never had a single bubble to worry about. Other Tremco urethane products say right on the container that a mild soapy solution is useful for tooling the product. And I've never experienced any negative results of the cured product using this method. If you've had conflicting experience and don't like this idea, well, just don't use it. And if I try to tool this, dry tool it or whatever, uh, in some cases where the edges are perfectly smooth, I'd get a good finished bead, but a fingertip is about the only way to be able to uh, get a finished, nice finished bead in all situations. But as soon as you touch this stuff, it's just sticky as all get out. You can't get a good bead in here that's reliable or consistent. So that's where the magic a 409 or a soapy spray comes in. Just a quick spritz of that bead and a fingertip, and this stuff just tools out like magic. And the goal of this tooling is to feather that um, caulk down to where it's just the thickness of the masking tape where it meets the masking tape. I don't want to step there. Another cool thing about this is, if I need to add more caulk, which I don't really need to here, but I want to show you, 
I can just go right over that 409 with another spritz and just work that additional caulk in. Like I said, in this, in this situation, I didn't need to do that. But if you end up with a spot that's a little starved for uh, urethane, you can add some more. And conversely, if you get too much, you can just scoop this stuff out and put it in somewhere else. And just work back and forth until that joint is nice and full uh, with a little concave surface. And that's just as smooth as can be. Once I'm happy with the way that joint is filled and tooled, I pull off the masking tape and make a note, I pull the masking tape across the bead so that this little, if there's any extra sealant there, it folds it over onto that tool joint. So you get this little flashed edge on there, but again, it's no big deal because a little spritz of 409 allows that little bit to fold over into the bead and come up with a perfect edge. No slop, no smear onto the concrete. I pull this other piece of tape across the joint this way for the same reason. And the better of a job you do tooling the joint, the less of this extra flare that you get. And again, pra practice makes that go a little more smoothly. And that right there is what I'm looking for. There's no unevenness, there's no dips, there's no bumps, there's no smears. It's perfect with a little bit of 409 on the surface, that doesn't hurt anything. And now I can sprinkle in some of that fine silica sand into the joint. And just kind of overdo it, it doesn't matter. The only part of that sand that remains is what actually sticks to the caulk. The rest of this will just blow away when it dries. And that caulk does, or that sand does two things. It keeps dirt and bugs out of there. It keeps it from sticking to a shoe if somebody happens to step on this before it's cured. And it also gives the surface of the caulk a rough uh, texture, a little bit like smoothly finished concrete. I can use this soft dry brush to take off some of that excess sand so you can see what it looks like underneath there. But keep in mind that that caulk is incredibly soft right now and even pushing too hard with a brush can change the surface of the caulk. I'm going to go ahead and caulk and sand the rest of these joints here today and probably by the time I get done editing the video that sand will be dry enough to blow it away. But I hope you agree that that's a pretty sweet looking sealed control joint. I'm just going to let the camera run while I caulk, tool, and sand the rest of this joint. To give you an idea of the speed of this process, once you get a system down, you kind of get used to the steps. The sausage tube contains the same volume as two of the standard size caulking tube, but there's far less waste byproduct when it's done. Well, it should give you a pretty good idea how this process works. Uh, of course, I don't have a cameraman here. I'm trying to line up for the camera, so that kind of slows me down. And then I'm doing extra starting and stopping for the video. Uh, when I'm just doing a section like this, I can just do this whole length, put the caulk in, tool it, peel up the tape, put in the sand like that. So it, it looks a lot slower than it is when you get um, up to speed on it. A section like this uh, probably take 20 minutes, less than a half an hour uh, to do it and get a really nice job. I took pictures a few years back of how not to do a control joint and I can stick those in here in the video. You can see that it's all uneven, it's sloppy, it's not smooth, it fills up with dirt and bottom line is it doesn't seal up the joint very well. The advantage of using this method uh, with this product instead of a self-leveling is uh, this driveway has a slope. If I tried to do this uh, joint here with self-leveling it, I'll just run down to that end and I'd have a mess on my hands. Uh, using the masking tape confines the edges. Uh, it's very easy to get an uneven bead and if you don't have masking tape there, anytime you touch it, it just makes it worse. So I really like this whole setup and I hope you find it helpful too. The cold weather is making my camera battery fade there, so I'm just going to wrap this up. Well, in the time it took the battery to recharge so I could shoot this, this all dried up. I got the sand blown off. And uh, so the bead is pretty much complete. And for the record, in the time the battery was charging, 
I was able to do this control joint here. This is a 10 foot door. I was able to uh, mask it, caulk it, tool it, uh, and sand it all in that 10 minute period of time. So it goes pretty quick once you're set up and you're not trying to do it in front of a camera. So that's it for this video. If you like what you saw, I'd appreciate you consider subscribing if you haven't already. And while you're at it, poke that thumbs up button. Let YouTube know you like what you see going on here. We've got some cold wet weather moving in, so I'm glad to have this uh, project taken care of. I'm going to go get this video edited and uploaded so you can check it out. And as always, until next time, thanks for watching.